Welcome back to another episode of my Pokemon Prism walkthrough. This is a gold ROM hack, not heart gold, but original gold from the Game Boy Color era. Now, uh, I would include the link to download this particular ROM, but last time I went on their site, my virus protection software was suggesting that you better not go there, there's some malicious code. So, I don't know what to make of that. This ROM that I have here that I'm playing through and skipping all the wild Pokemon because their encounter rates are just too high and I don't have that much money for repels. But, um... Yeah, it doesn't seem to be giving any virus. Never noticed anything bad about it, but... Who knows? Things change over time. I mean, it's been a while since I've been to the site. So, Google's your best friend in this case, Pokemon Prism. Look it up. But uh, we just went the south route of Laurel Forest, if you were wondering where exactly we were. And we're in Torinia City. He wished he could awaken. Dreams scare me. Huh. Some tormenting dreams? I do wonder. Well. I guess we're gonna have to find out when we go talk to the gym leader. Let's just check out this city first. Never been here, so I'm not sure what it has to offer. Ooh, a magnet train! Let's see where we can head to. Holy crap! Three regions Johto, Kanto, and Rijon. That's awesome. And we can go right away. That's freaking awesome. So now we're in Botan City. You Naloze? Naljose? Good, carry on. Yeah, how would you pronounce what we're from? We're not Kantoian, not Jotoian. Who knows? Do people describe themselves by their region as much? I wouldn't be sure. Man, this place looks great. And this is, you know, I guess you can't have access fully to all the regions yet because this is still in beta. But what a great idea. I mean, I've discussed that in the Pokemon Black walkthrough extensively, how they should put many regions into one game. And that's where ROM hacks really shine, you know. It's pure Pokemon lovers' ingenuity put to the test. Put to the coding test. Well, this seems like the sensible way to go. Oh, but the random encounters in here are almost as bad, if not worse, than Laurel Forest. Here lies some dead guy. Here lies some dead guy. I wonder if any dead girls lie anywhere. Or maybe this is a man-only grave. This is a man's club, man. No women dying here. Anyway, it is unfortunate to say that I predict this graveyard is symbolizing a near end to this ROM walkthrough. Uh, death is not to be feared. So yes, death will not be feared, even when this walkthrough does end. We'll move on to fun things. Just think of it as freeing up more time for me to do Crystal. Which, yes, somebody asked in the comments recently, is Crystal coming back? It certainly is. It will be coming back with a vengeance fairly soon. Ha! <laughs> so we just kicked Shin. Kicked Shin's ass. I didn't know ass had shins. I thought it was a whole part of the body plan. Not particularly the ass that has the shins, but... Okay. Poke logic. Uh, so speaking of poke logic, I was thinking about how many more years is it going to take before we see Nintendo releasing hologram video game systems? I mean, really, this is—it's uh, a serious issue. I, I believe it is on the verge, and just at the rate that technology is going, so long as we can sustain our environment without pillaging it completely and uh, leaving some sort of atmosphere and enough clean water to drink, you know, if we can 
hold on with that, technology is going to get crazy. And eventually we're really going to have some game system that presents itself right in front of us. It would be awesome if it was a portable system. This way you could have it at your side in your belt loop or something. They'd give you a special holster, whatever the uh, handheld of the time will be. DSH. H for hologram, because you know Nintendo. And what's this? Speaking about H, hydraulic is evolving. Into Crocona. Badass. Awesome. So, yes, see, we all know how Nintendo loves to repeat the names of its former successful systems so they can neurally linguistic program your mind into thinking the next one is going to be the hot shit. That's something interesting. I don't know if people notice, but that's not something I'm going to talk about now. But how effective that marketing scheme is just getting you to think of a past joy you had with their Nintendo console whether it's a Game Boy Advance or a DS Fat or Light when you hear 3DS you're intrigued just by the DS but back to my hologram idea they'd have some kind of holster in it would uh, it would have some kind of clear siding on it so the projection could come out fine and it would be almost like a camera projection kinda like the DSi camera or 3DS camera on the front except it would be a third one for projection and then you could be walking down the street with your Pokemon live photons that would be tremendous and anyone with a, a DSH as we'll call it as the uh, prototype can be named anybody with a DSH will be easily spottable by a pack of roam roaming roving Pokemon and it doesn't really matter how large they are I suppose because they're holograms they can walk through things without disturbing anything but ah, oh, I cannot wait I cannot wait for the future of hologram gaming holograms have always been a fascination of mine though I think ever since Probably uh, before the Gorillas, but really, as soon as I saw the Gorillas, the uh, music group, the Gorillas, look them up. They are superb. Uh, look up live shows. Uh, they are a cartoon band, and what they do to go on stage sometimes is project holograms of the cartoon characters. Really great performance, really intense, and really expensive, too. But uh, that is some archaic technology compared to what we have today and you know this was in within a 10 year jump of uh, the gorilla's life cycle which incidentally they are 10 I recently got an email telling me they were they're like we're 10 nope still some dead guy no dead girls guess this is a man grave kinda like the man cave but it's where all the dead man zombies go to hang out it's my man grave These wild Pokemon are too much. Console gaming. That could be something for holograms. Yeah, you know, as soon as I saw the possibilities, just how lifelike they really were, that gets your mind working. Because you have to think of how humongous supercomputer or not supercomputers but normal computers with about the calculation power of a toaster <laughs> you know those have been out since like the 80s and these huge computers taking up rooms have shrunken down to the size of tiny laptops whether it's tablets iPads uh, like my quadraxis beast of a computer and sits comfortably on your lap something that went from a room size to a lap within a lifetime, within less than a lifetime even, that's enormous. So I don't see why this wouldn't apply with every other field of science and technology. Now make sure you have a pen and paper or you're just going by this and make note of it. That girl that you talk to in that house, she tells you, she tells you the order that you want to look at these graves 
inspect them with the A button. See, it just notes that you did something right. Now, how can you do something right by going to a grave and pressing A, you might wonder? Well, it's a pattern. And when you do the pattern in the correct sequence, which I think my first run at this, I'm not doing it right. I think I forget midway because I didn't have a pen or paper. I was just trying to go off of pure memorization. But sometimes the old mind can fail you. So uh, do take note of the pattern. And uh, I apologize that this might be incorrect. We'll know very soon. If I go back to the mansion, you'll know. I fucked up. But going back to the topic of technology and science, that's really why I want to be a scientist later in life or whenever it happens, but uh, why science will always interest me. Even if I'm not a scientist, I'll always be involved in reading excellent articles by magnificent scientists who are creating awesome inventions, changing all of our lives. It's, it's very inspiring. And it's really true human ingenuity. You see our evolution coming to the surface, bubbling up. You see it through science. Because that's what we're the best at. We're best at using our massive cranium to craft tools to solve problems in our world. And it's, it's fascinating. Ever expanding. And I do wonder if within my lifetime we'll come upon inevitable, or not inevitable, sorry, but um, never-ending life. Just a constant regenerating form like Deoxys, where if you get hurt, it just reforms by nanobot technology. Something to reverse the aging process even, that's... <laughs> scientists are even working on crazy concept like that. Kind of a funny thing to be mentioning while we're walking around this graveyard, reversing the aging process, bringing back the dead. I mean, heck, Walt Disney knew the power of science. That's why he got cryogenically frozen upon death. He's positive that eventually we'll have the technology to bring him back to life from ice, from his frozen form. Pretty freaking crazy if you think about it. I mean, Walt Disney pretty much set himself up like a legendary Pokemon. You know, kind of like an Articuno at the Seafoam Islands, frozen in a gigantic glacier. The trainer steps on the stairs, hears a rumble, the ground starts to shake and tremble. It looks up, sees this massive glacier, frozen frost waving at his face, freezing him, giving him frostbite as he witnesses it cracking, splitting open. Bum, 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 the legendary Walt Disney emerges. Use the Master Ball! But seriously, man, he, he knows. He knows that one day we can do it. And I bet we could. I don't know if we should, but I bet we could. I mean, we've got quite the population problem already. But, uh, oh well. Let's eliminate the population a little bit more, hmm, shall we? Shock these old souls into the grave. I mean, they must be uh, in denial, these old folks here. Oh. Never mind, they're mediums. That means they're crazy psychics. But I was going to suggest they must be a little delusional. They're right near the grave, yet they're not hopping in just yet. They're like, No, I'm going to hang out in a haunted mansion with my ghost Pokemon. Uh, but I'm very alive. This is what I call living. Yeah. All right, another old dude. The ghosts claiming something. Ah, Sableye's barely a ghost. All right, it's a ghost slash dark type, but that's cheap in my book. Haxor. You guys should definitely check out my EV training blog on my website, which is in the description. I won't waste breath on telling you what it is. Check the description out. Because I actually raised a Sableye once and found that there's this new ability it can learn in the fifth generation with the hidden abilities from the dream world. I love that new mechanic, by the way. Who would have thought changing the abilities of Pokemon would have changed the metagame so drastically? But it does. Ooh, bedroom key. Let's go to the boudoir. 
But uh, yeah, I raised a Sableye, and it has this move, or ability rather, called Trickster. Which, uh, it enables, if I recall, yes it does, it enables the po- oh, n not Trickster, sorry, Prankster. Prankster, that's what it was. That's why I wasn't clicking in my mind right. But it allows non-attacking moves to go first, so supporting moves like Confuse Ray, Will-O-Wisp, uh, Recovery, devious moves like that, Substitution, things of that nature to ultimately stall your opponent, because keep in mind, if you don't know, that combination of dual ghost slash dark type makes Sableye invincible, or, or not invincible, but not weak to any types, which gives you a little bit of an air of invincibility in my mind. And Spiritome here is the same way. That's pretty cool that they have these, uh, <laughs> these uh, new sprites. I'm loving that Spiritome. Looks so great in the gold form. And it's funny they have the most uh, wild old people with the hardest uh, ghosts to take out. But that combination will yield no type weakness. And another bedroom key. It's like Luigi's Mansion but with Pokemon. Alright, um, let me just get the item first. Awesome, repels. Super repels, to quote Pat. Alright, I do believe that we can head into here. And see... <gasps> Gengar! One of my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> the dreams come to me. I was starving anyway. Ready for bedtime? <laughs> Whoa, what's happening? The dream world? 